And for Formula One in Miami, it's race on. And we've got a good getaway for Perez. He chops across Alonso and he maintains the lead into turn one. Alonso trying that outside line. It won't work. Hello, Formula One fans. Welcome to Formula Punt Racer. As the title of this video says, this is my review on the Miami GP, which occurred back on the 7th of May. And boy, oh boy, it had an interesting start to it. It all began with Mexico Sergio Perez of Red Bull on pole and the two Spaniards of Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin and Carlos Sainz Jr. in his Ferrari, respectively starting second and third. So a Hispanic 1-2-3 start. Who would have thought? And so, when the lights went out and away they went, we were in for some big exciting racing action. Miami style. Yeah! While Sergio Perez's Dutch teammate at Red Bull, Max Verstappen, started in ninth, that was not going to let the Flying Dutchman sway him whatsoever because after the lights went out, well, Perez led the race for the next 15 laps with Fernando Alonso being barely able to hang on but not being able to keep up very well. Max was able to claw his way up from ninth place and by lap 15 get by Fernando Alonso for second, another Red Bull 1-2, so it tells us one thing about that Austrian team. The stakes, as always, were very high. Yeah! Eventually, Max got by Sergio Perez to hold on to the lead and never let go, making another 1-2 finish for Red Bull in Miami. So congratulations, Max Verstappen. I just knew that, despite a ninth place, there would be no Verstappen Max. Yeah! And another third place finish for Aston Martin driver Fernando Alonso happened to occur as well. So congratulations, Fernando Alonso, and to Aston Martin for getting another podium place finish. Ah, uh, yes. Four out of five races, Fernando has finished third. The one he hasn't was fourth, but still... Finishing no worse than fourth for Aston Martin for Fernando Alonso. What a consistent run. Still, he's third in points, and he's got a big gap between himself and Max Verstappen if he's to take the championship lead. And Red Bull is still way ahead in the Constructors' title, but Aston Martin is still second, just about, like, less than ten points ahead of Mercedes, which lies in third. What a run. And to think, not one retirement throughout the entire race, although disappointingly enough, the only American in the field, Logan Sargent of Williams, he finished dead last, which is disappointing considering he lives not far from Miami. Still, he had the will to keep racing on and um, not retire, so where there's a Williams, there's a way. <laughs> Despite the fact that Fernando Alonso has finished third for Aston Martin, uh, the gap has shrunk between that team and Mercedes because the two Mercedes of George Russell and Lewis Hamilton did finish in the points. Unfortunately, Lance was not able to make it in the top 10. He was barely beaten at the line by Yuki Tsunoda for 11. So the young Canadian finishes 12th. Quite a close shave, eh? <laughs> I will admit one thing, though. I might have said that this race was actionful. My mistake. It wasn't. There was hardly any passing, and the fact there were no retirements either was quite pretty dismal. And to make matters worse, People had called this event the greatest spectacle in motorsports. No, no, no. That is an absolute no-no for fans of the Indianapolis 500. Boo! 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 Fortunately, Mark Miles, the CEO of IndyCars, huh, reached out to F1 saying that's a no-no, like not be calling anything but the Indianapolis 500 the greatest spectacle in racing. And I agree, especially with the race just 13 days away from now. Let's just hope F1 doesn't do anything like that again. But then celebs like LL Cool J, who were present at the uh, Miami GP, said it again to just add it on. I mean, like, that is just ridiculous, and that's just intolerable. This is intolerable! And, <laughs> and the way they introduce the drivers is just a little overboard. And I gotta admit, that's just pretty stupid. If they want to do it Miami style, that was a really dumb way. And even the drivers think it was a drag, and like... They didn't come here to just um, show off, they came here to race, and that's what um, the F1 racing circuit and IndyCars are supposed to be about. Like, not show off like a carnival, like, it's race, nothing more. So, 
as a result of like the fact there was no action and how they overkilled the Miami GP, <laughs> I'd say if anything went overboard, it was F1's ego. Yeah! Lance Stroll may have had the misfortune of finishing outside the points in Miami this past weekend, but all the fun was not lost for the young Canadian because the following weekend after Miami, in Venice, Italy, his sister Chloe would be getting married to an Australian Olympic medalist named Scotty James. And of course, it's by good fortune, his fellow countryman and F1 racer Daniel Ricciardo was present for this party. So, with the strolls being Jewish, I like to say one thing for Chloe and Scotty, Mazel tov! Congratulations, Scotty and Chloe, on your recent marriage. I hope you have the best time of your life. And it would seem pretty fitting that the uh, wedding and the party got uh, held in Venice, Italy. Where's my invite, by the way? <laughs> but anyway, because given Lance's busy schedule, it was perfect timing because the next F1 round is this Sunday, May 21st, in nearby San Marino at the Imola Circuit. So this ought to be an exciting one for that. And that's where you can catch the action. Can Red Bull maintain their dominant ways as they usually have been this whole season? Or can Mercedes or Ferrari or Aston Martin finally beat the Bulls to top spot? Tune in to find out. And to think, the day before the Miami GP, there were three exciting things going on that day. First was the IndyCar Mexican driver's birthday, Patricia Ward. So once again, I say... Feliz cumpleaños, Pato Award. I hope you have the very best of luck at the Indianapolis 513 days from now, which I will also give you the schedule of when practice and qualifying and the race scheduling starts at the end of this video. The second thing was the fact that King Charles III had his coronation ceremony. It's good to be the king. And third and finally, while Aston Martin may have come up short in Miami, Another British car manufacturer came out on top in the Formula E round in Monte Carlo. And it was also a Kiwi driver one to finish, but two different teams, same powertrains. As Envision Jaguar racing driver Nick Cassidy took another win for the season with Mitch Evans of the Jaguar TCS racing team finishing second, a Jaguar 1-2. So what a way to capitalize on the King's recent coronation. Congratulations, Gavnez. And a victory by Jaguar, especially in the streets of Monte Carlo, are exactly what the cat dragged in. Yeah! Yep, birds, for all you racing fans who also love cute little kitties, their British cousin Jaguar has taken another victory, just what the cat dragged in. Let's see what my sister's cat Meatball has to say about this exciting turn of events. Hmm, not much comment, huh, Meatball? Well, at least I know one other cat who's definitely hyped up about this fact. Ah, <coughs> uh, pretty cute way for the Jaguar to show its love for Mother England. But as for its other British car rival, Aston Martin, I wish you the very best of luck in San Marino. And Lance, I hope you had fun at your sister's wedding. Once again, Scotty and Chloe, congratulations, Mazel Tov. And with the Stroll family being Jewish, I hope that Lance or Fernando can beat the Red Bulls at San Marino. In fact, I hope they can knock them out of the matzo ball park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll admit one thing. I love matzo ball soup. That stuff's addictively delicious. In fact, I'd say it's addictive as crack. And I'm sure Aston Martin team principal Mike Crack would agree with me. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. If you like this video, please share and subscribe to Formula Pun Racer for more humorous news on racing on F1 and Indy cars. And be sure to tune in for practice for the Indianapolis 500, which is in less than 24 hours from now. The official TV coverage schedule I'm about to send you right now, along with the final results of the Miami GP. Gefelicitier to Max Verstappen for winning another victory in Miami. Congratulations, Nick Cassidy, for your victory in Formula E. Happy birthday, Patricia Ward, and once again, congratulations, Chloe Stroll and Scotty James on your recent marriage, and um, Mazel Tov, of course. So, that's all for now. See you all in the next video, everyone. I'm Aaron Cylinder, firing on all cylinders. Yeah.